Today I'm going to show this squirrel in a high speed RPM test. The unloaded RPM is going to be around 2680, something like that, 2650. I'm going to run the system on 24 volts input and around, yeah, 1 amp, something like that. And between 800 milliamps. I'm gonna get it started. Going for first speed. I am gonna do a 1 watt AC test, a 9 watt AC test. These nine LEDs are in parallel. Also gonna do RPM test. I've also written down all the RPM tests and load I did because with this coil it does uh, put some drag on the system on the drive side but it does it in a very slowly way so it takes minutes and minutes between the tests to see the stable RPM. Then I'm gonna do a DC load test with a 1.2 uh, load a 5 watt load and of course gonna fill this large capacity over here going for second speed the reason I'm doing this uh, around 2600 or 2700 rpm is that it really doesn't matter because it does put a load on the system if I go higher in rpm it does get a little bit better so there is room for improvement for this coil so uh, I will be making a uh, next generation and an upgraded version of this coil also as I did with one of the other one of mine going for third speed now this is overdrive The unloaded RPM I've written here is 2680, so uh, we're going to wait till it reaches almost that number before we I toss the before I start the testing. I'm still using the 24 pole rotor. Let's check the RPM. Hope you guys can see that also when I do it like this. 2550, 60, 70, and climbing. Let's give it a little bit more time. Gonna go for the 1 amp meter scale. It is now unloaded, it's not connected yet. This is the output wire. One lead is not connected yet. Twenty-four volts input at eight hundred milliamps. Let's check the RPN one more time. Twenty-six 2660 yes we are almost there let's check it one more time 2670 yeah we can start testing now gonna put the 1 watt AC load first there it is is dropping it will drop and stabilize at 2440 rpm we are not going to wait for it because it does take a long time the input is still 24 and uh, just 
Yeah, let's say they're only 50 now. Let's check the RPM. It's 24, 72 and dropping. Now I'm gonna go for a 9 watt load. As you see, the 9 watt load is on. With the 9 watt load, it will go to 2275 RPM. And it is now at 2330. It is still dropping, but it takes its time. This is the light I'm getting with the 9 watt load, which is not bad. Yeah. Still on the 9 watt load. Let's check the RPM. 2286, 85. It will stabilize at 2275. Now I'm gonna short the AC output. It is shorted. And the shorted RPM will be around 2290. Which is a little bit higher than the 9 watt load on the AC side. Let's check the RPM. I really hope you guys can see that. As you can see, 2,294 RPM. So shorted RPM is higher than RPM with the 9 watt load. So shorten your coil to see is that uh, is not the most um, it's not the best. Uh, load test for your coils. I said that already in my previous video. Let's see the RPM again. 2,900. Sorry, 2,294. Okay. Now I'm gonna go with the DC side with 1.2 watt load. You can see the two light bulbs glowing here. 3.5 volts at 160 milliamp. The RPM of this should be around 2230 when it's stabilized, when you wait for it. But it's not gonna do that, otherwise, like I said, it's gonna be a long and boring video. RPM now is 2263 and decreasing. That's a 1.2 watt load in the dark, 3.5 volts, nothing special there. Let's check the RPM before we move on. 2,244. Now I'm going to short the name, now I'm going to go for the 5 watt load here and here and also here you can see here the 5 watt load is slightly lit not much a 2.7 volt DC and it will make the system drop to 22 35 2235 rpm and by the way the system at this point is uh, between 23.9 and between 900 and 1 amp so it's around uh, 150 million more which is not bad at all RPM with the 5 watt load is 2259 and decreasing it will stabilize at 2235 if you wait for it we are not gonna do that 
Now I'm going to short the DC side. You see, there's a little bit spark. And that spark is because this capacity is being filled rapidly by the gen by the generator coil here. Shorting the coil should give me on the DC side should give me 2260 2260 RPM. Let's see if that's true or not. 2262 and yeah. So as you can see when I short the coil the RPM are higher than with the 1.2 watt and the 5 watt. Uh, let's check the RPM one more time. 2265 DC shorted. Gonna put back the 5 watt load as you can see. Shorted it was 2265 and now with the 5 watt load it is 2250 and decreasing. So once again Shorting your coil is not the best method to see if your coil is working properly or not. Really, put a load on it. Test the AC side and the DC side. Now I'm going to put a real load on the system, which is this large capacitor over here. If you've seen my previous video, you have seen this capacitor also. And this capacitor will put the most load on the system that's one lead yeah I'll we're getting there that's the other lead switching on with this capacitor the RPM will be at 2150 that is lower when the coil was shorted on the DC side and when the coil was shorted at the AC side so as you can see once again shorten your coil doesn't mean anything put a real load on it And not only lights, if you have a motor, it's also good, or a large capacitor in this case, is absolutely perfect. Let's check the RPM now. RPM is now 2250 and decreasing rapidly. Input is still 23.9 at yeah, 9.50. And 1 amp, 950 milliamp to 1 amp. The capacitor is now filled till 15 volts. It started to drop a little bit because the system is slowing down. When the system stabilizes around 2150 RPM, the capacitor will also. You can see the capacitor again, 14.7 volt, and the meter panel is also giving 14.7 volt DC. Let's check the RPM one more time. Two thousand one hundred and fifty-nine. 58 so it's still slowly slowing down it will stabilize around 2150 the unloaded rpm is 2680 and at maximum load with the capacitor this one the rpm drops to 2150 so there's roughly 530 rpm less and the input is now 23.9 at 
just above one amp. So the system is pulling, let's say, uh, roughly 200 milliamps more, which is not bad. Other words, this coil has some potential also. By the way, this coil is also an air core. Uh, I don't know if you would call it air core because it doesn't really have a, a core. Here, this piece of wood is in here to hold it in place. Let me see if I can get it out for you guys. Just to keep it in place, that's not really a core, that just makes some space between the wires. The capacitor is now a 15.0 volt DC, and the RPM is now 2151. Nice. Remember this 2151. Now I'm gonna short the DC quickly. Oops, I said quickly, didn't I? Okay. So you see, it is shorted. The C side is completely shorted. With the capacitor as a load, the RPM was 2,151, I think. Anyway, something like that. And now let's see what the system is doing with the coil shorted. 2260. It's already uh, 110 RPM more. So remember, don't only short your coils because it doesn't say anything. Okay, I'm gonna put it now on the 9 watt load then I think I've shown enough of this coil and say enough about it this is a 9 watt load now AC this is supposed to reach RPM of 2275 2,284, 83, so it is decreasing. Uh, now I'm going to yeah, give you another view. Yeah, going to disconnect the complete system. No input, lights out in the laboratory, and of course the rotor keeps spinning because there is no cogging effect. Still have some lights, plenty of light left. You can see my hand over here, RPM meter is still going. So, another good test, and this coil definitely has some potential also. And this coil does produce more output than the previous one, which is a good thing. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.